The Witch of Endor Was it truly Samuel who spoke to Saul, or was it a demonic spirit? We all know that the Bible talks against the use of witchcraft or consulting mediums and those who practice such arts, such as divination and so on. But many people may not know that the Bible contains instances of sorcerers or witches. Today we will be looking at the encounter with the Witch of Endor. The Witch of Endor is found in the Old Testament in 1 Samuel chapter 28 verse 3 to 25. This chapter of the Bible is also regarded as the coup de grace on King Samuel's tragic kingship of Israel. It is interesting to note that the first king of Israel was Saul. Before Saul resorted to consulting mediums, he had inquired of the Lord. But the Lord didn't answer him by dreams, nor by Urim, nor by prophets, because God rejected him for the rebellion of his heart. Saul knew that Samuel was a true prophet of God, so he decided to consult his spirit whether he could hear from God through him. Samuel had just died, which left a big hole in the life of Saul, because Samuel is the prophet who anointed Saul and was virtually a counselor to Saul. But Saul had a problem with disobedience. Now who exactly is the witch of Endor? She is a female sorcerer who was visited by Saul after the prophet and judge Samuel had died. Although Saul had banished all sorcerers and conjurers from his kingdom, his concern about the final outcome of Israel's battle against the Philistines caused him to seek the services of someone with a familiar spirit. As a king who needed to hear from God for his people, the Lord had shut down all avenues through which he could hear from him. Saul took matters into his own hands because God was not answering him quickly enough, and he went to the witch of Endor. When his servants told him of such a woman at Endor, he disguised himself and visited her that night. Endor is a town in the lot of Issachar, assigned to Manasseh. Saul asked her to conjure up the spirit of the prophet Samuel to tell his fortunes. When the woman reminded him of the law against practicing her art, he assured her that she would be protected. He even went to the extent of swearing to her by the Lord, stating, As surely as the Lord lives, you will not be punished for this. The woman complied and conjured up a spirit, and what she saw was strange and unusual. What she saw, according to her, was a spirit. What she saw, according to her, was a divine being. 1 Samuel 28 verse 13 And the king said unto her, Be not afraid, for what sawest thou? And the woman said unto Saul, I saw gods ascending out of the earth. I saw gods ascending out of the earth. I saw gods ascending out of the earth. When Saul incorrectly or correctly identified the spirit of Samuel, the spirit informed Saul that he and his three sons would die in battle the next day and that the Israelites would fall to the Philistines. Now this passage of scripture divides Bible scholars. There are two particular schools of thoughts regarding 1 Samuel chapter 28. The Witch of Endor, was it truly Samuel who spoke to Saul, or was it a demonic spirit? One school of thought is that it is indeed Samuel who was called up by the witch. The other school of thought is that it was not Samuel who was called up, it was actually an evil spirit impersonating the prophet Samuel. Now regarding this specific chapter, just because you belong to one specific school of thought does not mean that everyone who has an opposing view from you is going to hell. An individual's interpretation of this text is not a heaven and hell issue. You cannot question someone's salvation based on their interpretation of this text. 
Now in this sermon, we are going to explore both schools of thought. The Bible didn't give a clear-cut stand as to whether it is truly the spirit of Samuel that spoke to Saul or not. However, there are scriptural arguments that could support either of the propositions. We do not know the exact answer to the questions. All we know is that Saul disobeyed God by practicing necromancy, the consultation of the dead. The school of thought we will examine first is that it was not Samuel who was called up and it was actually an evil spirit impersonating the prophet Samuel. 1 Samuel 28, 11-12 Then said the woman, Whom shall I bring up unto thee? And he said, Bring me up Samuel. And when the woman saw Samuel, she cried with a loud voice. And the woman spake to Saul, saying, Why hast thou deceived me? For thou art Saul. Reason number one why this school of thought believes that this is not Samuel is that God warned his people in several passages of the Bible against consulting mediums or spiritists. God forbids his people from practicing it. The first argument is that if God has chosen not to speak to a person, there is nothing that that person can do to force God into speaking to him. Since God didn't speak to Saul through dreams, or through Urim, or by the prophets, then we shouldn't think it wise that God would speak to him through this medium. Deuteronomy 18, 10 through 11. Let no one be found among you who sacrifices their son or daughter in the fire, who practices divination or sorcery, interprets omens, engages in witchcraft, or casts spells, or who is a medium or spiritist, or who consults the dead. Leviticus 19.31 Do not turn to mediums or seek out spiritists, for you will be defiled by them. I am the Lord your God. Leviticus 26 I will set my face against anyone who turns to mediums and spiritists to prostitute themselves by following them, and I will cut them off from their people. God has a track record of being against these practices. Therefore, why would God speak to Saul that way? Those who are of the point that it was not Samuel who spoke to Saul argue that God would not work alongside a medium. And they also argue that even if the witch of Endor was helped by the devil in this occasion, the devil does not have the power over the dead. He does not have the power to resurrect or call people from the dead. He does not have the power to raise up those who are asleep in Jesus. There is nothing in the Bible that tells us that the devil has this type of power. And this is the reason why some Bible scholars believe that this encounter is a demonic impersonation of Samuel. Some Bible scholars believe that the medium, with her powers from the dark side, summoned a demonic spirit that deceived both her and Saul into believing that the one who she saw appearing was indeed Samuel. But this suggestion is also disputed by some, because it does not speak to the issue of motive. After all, what advantage does Satan gain by Samuel's words to Saul? Another reason it was unlikely that Samuel's spirit spoke to Saul was that God condemned necromancy in strong terms. 1 Chronicles 10.13 says, So Saul died for his transgression, which he committed against the Lord, even against the word of the Lord, which he kept not, and also for asking counsel of one that had a familiar spirit to inquire of it. If it was God that sent Samuel to Saul, he wouldn't have punished him for consulting a medium. So. What Saul saw might not be the actual spirit of Samuel. Again, the place where Saul visited was a strange place for a miracle wrought by God to be experienced. Furthermore, those who argued that it was not Samuel who spoke to Saul state that technically the prophecy which was given was false. The prophecy stated, 1 Samuel 28, 19, Moreover, the Lord will also deliver Israel with you into the hand of the Philistines, and tomorrow you and your sons will be with me. The Lord will also deliver the army of Israel into the hand of the Philistines. What actually happens differs to the prophecy. The Philistines pressed hard after Saul and his sons, and they killed his sons Jonathan, Abinadab, and Malkishua. The fighting grew fierce around Saul, and when the archers overtook him, they wounded him critically, but they did not kill him. Rather, Saul killed himself. So, since the prophecy was not fulfilled the exact way it was said, it is believed to be false and not from Samuel because Samuel was a true prophet of God. Again, when David lost his son, he said in 2 Samuel 12, 23, But now he is dead. Wherefore should I fast? Can I bring him back again? I shall go to him 
but he shall not return to me. Since the Bible teaches that the dead cannot return, some think it is safer to believe that what Saul saw was a false appearance of Samuel. Finally, some hold the view that if truly Samuel was the one that appeared to Saul, then a form of credence to necromancy had to be given. The next question would be, if God allowed it once, why won't he allow its continuity? Now let's focus on the school of thought that believes it was indeed Samuel that appeared to Saul. The Bible says Samuel appeared, verses 14, 15, 16, and 20. Secondly, although some have the impression that the witch feigned the voice of Samuel, however, her reaction disproves such a proposition. The visit of Saul to her was unannounced. She didn't plan for it. Neither did she know it was Saul because he disguised himself and also went to her by night. So the reaction of the witch when she saw Samuel showed that she was terrified. This was more than a mere hallucination from the woman and Saul. Second, the account didn't record that it was only the woman that saw and heard Samuel. Although the witch saw Samuel first and described him accurately to Saul, Saul got the exact description of Samuel and was persuaded that he was the one who was brought forth. Moreover, the woman didn't speak to Saul thereafter. It was recorded that Samuel had the conversation with Saul in 1 Samuel 28, 15 through 19. Another reason people who hold this viewpoint believe it was Samuel who actually appeared to Saul was that Samuel spoke to Saul as a prophet who he truly was while on earth and his prediction came true. Samuel told Saul that he would be with him the following day and it was so because Saul actually died and joined Samuel in the world of the dead. Contrary to the school of thought that says that Saul was not killed by the Philistines, it is believed that Saul only killed himself while he was in the process of dying because he was badly wounded by the arrow of his Philistine enemies. More so, all that Samuel told Saul was consistent with what God would have told him. The message was truthful and there was no lie in it. So, it is believed also that Samuel was the one who responded to Saul. The main idea here is not basically the message was given, but the person that appeared. And there was no record that Saul disbelieved what he saw. Bible students are divided regarding this topic. Whether it was the spirit of Samuel that responded to Saul or not, God does not give credence to consulting of mediums. That God commanded us not to consult mediums does not mean we won't get certain responses from them, but he forbids us from doing it for our own good. God didn't justify Saul for practicing necromancy. Saul paid the price for doing so. There is no reason a believer should attempt consulting mediums or spiritists when we have the Holy Spirit dwelling in us. We can always consult Him at every point of need. With the information presented to you, do you think it was Samuel or do you think it was something else? Comment below.